And we're back with another video, everybody. And today, today I'm going to respond to a question I got from a gentleman, a subscriber named Corey. Thank you, Corey, for this comment, this email, actually, because I think it's applicable and I think it's something worthy of having a discussion about, which is the TRX values. And that one, that one kind of blew my mind when I started doing the research. I, I knew it, but I just hadn't put a little effort into really digging in. So we'll talk about this that in just a second. But I do also want to take time in some of these videos to respond to some of the emails I get and some of the messages I get with questions that I think would apply to more than just the person who sent it. So if I can address those at the beginning of some of these videos, then all of you can get the answer rather than me having to type emails, which is just hard for me to get back to everybody. And, and here's what it is. It, I go, you know, a week with nothing and then 47 emails come in and I want to help everybody and it sometimes it's like three months later I get back to you and I just I feel bad about that so a uh, gentleman who messaged me about his and I'm not gonna say his name because some of these folks don't want to be shared uh, publicly but I will share his question which was he bought a 2018 Challenger Hellcat wide body manual and he wants to know if and he bought it the 2008 it's 2018 yes he bought it in 2021 with 3100 miles on it now it has just shy of 15,000 miles on it wants to know if that value is going to hold or go up and I'm gonna share that with all of you that you're not gonna like my answer but it's the answer we all need to understand we all need to grasp this answer and we need to accept it not argue with it and not believe the hype out there that frankly is driving the most irrational belief systems. If you want something that's going to go up in value, go buy a house. Go buy the cheapest house, the most expensive neighborhood you could possibly find and keep that thing for the rest of your life. And I promise you, not only will it go up in value, but once it's paid off, it will deliver you income via rent. You will always have an asset that's worth something. You'll have depreciation, you'll have repairs, you'll have costs in ownership of that thing, but that thing will go up in value because there's going to be more human beings, there's going to be less land, and as they try to save every possible creature and animal and insect in the world, there will be less land they can build on. So no matter how you cut it, if you're in a state where the sun shines a lot or it's a desirable community, your property values will improve. That's where you should put your money. You can also put it in the stock market into safe stuff, blue chips. You can go and put it into gold or some other precious metals. Silver, I hear, is a great thing right now. There's things you can do that will create stability and long-term wealth. Personally, I think Bitcoin is phenomenal. Right now, I'm, I'm 3X on my Bitcoin, and I can tell you, I'm just sitting on it. I don't care what's gonna happen, and I do a lot of research, and I believe that's gonna keep going. There's so many other places you can put your money. Buying a Challenger is not one of those things. Do not buy or own that car with the hope and plan that it suddenly or sometime goes up in value. So the answer to this gentleman is that no. It's not going to go up in value because the manual's rare. I'm sitting here in a manual Challenger right now, and I have lost my ever-loving ass. And I will tell you that you will too. And the good news is, is that you bought it used. So you probably bought it at a much better price than it would have cost you had you bought it new. And hopefully you got a fair interest rate and you were paying that loan down as fast as you can. And hopefully you have enjoyed the daylights out of that car because I promise you, I don't think there is a more fun car out there than a manual Hellcat. That is a blast. This manual Scat Pack is a blast. But the sad thing and the reason why that car is not going to see any appreciation, at least in probably my lifetime, I don't know how old he is, but in my lifetime it's not going to happen is because for a car to find appreciation it needs to be in pretty pristine condition and preserved for at least, let's just say, two decades. Let's say 20 plus years. And at that point, it needs to be really pristine, very low miles, well taken care of, and fall into that antique or classic category for people to want it, and also be considered a rare car. Now, just because they don't make them anymore doesn't mean that they won't make them at some point, because Dodge could be sold off tomorrow and Hellcats could come back. Crazier things have happened in history. And for that reason, to bank on that thing going up, it's just not a good bet. It's not a good investment. What it is, is a great car and a fun car to have a ton of 
a blast in, a ton of fun in. But with almost 15,000 miles on it, and assuming that it's your daily, and you're driving it often, you're not going to be able to sell that car for a bunch of money. By the time you're done with it, and I hope you do this, it's it ends up with 100,000 miles on it, and massive, massive um, memories of smiles driving that car, and enjoying the hell of that car. And it's likely going to fall down to a lower and lower value the more miles you put on it and unless you sit on it for 20 years put it in a hermetically sealed bubble in your garage and on blocks and start it up every month to keep the the juices flowing in it you're probably going to keep losing money you are going to keep losing money it's not an asset it's not an appreciable asset period it's just not please don't argue with me about this in the comments unless you have some kind of historical historical way of, of, uh, of laying it out for me but it's just not I don't care if they're the last calls these are cheap plastic fun toys that's what they are mass produced like you would not believe so that's that now let's jump into sorry for that that info by the way I see the pictures of his car freaking beautiful destroyer gray damn it's just gorgeous so uh but no it's not going up in value it's not it just won't sorry that is what it is now let's talk about the trx's here's the deal um trx's everywhere i look right now msrp is like 115 to 125 if you look really really hard you might find something somewhere at that 103 105 range and they are the base bases you can possibly get none of the carbon fiber or the ram bar or the the side rails or the stickers on the hood and the bed and pretty much every single trx that's ever been ordered with exception of a few show up to the dealers with the trx stickers what's the point of having that giant flex of a machine without that and i think it's like 500 dollars to get that so any of the things that got added to those things the wheels with the bead locks are a few thousand dollars and the the giant moon roof was thousands of dollars so the technology package is $10,000. So no matter how you cut it, most of these things are floating in the 125 range. Most of the ones that are out there used were the ones that were at the highest MSRP when they came out. And sadly, lots of people play, paid massive markups in let's say 21, 22, 23, and now markups are falling off but MSRP has been raised so high that we're looking at $125,000 average MSRP on so many of these TRXs, yet if you go back just one year, just one year, you will see near 20% decline in price if there's any miles put on the car. Let's say eight, nine, 10,000 miles, you'll see significant drops just by that thing becoming used. So it goes from 125 to that $100,000 range really really fast you might see better spec cars or a little bit more but for the most part these things drop let's just call it a 20 to twenty-five thousand dollar drop but remember in some states like mine in california you're going to pay about 10 percent in tax and license so 125 thousand dollar trx if you paid msrp for it which these dealers are starting to do but they should come down much more then you're looking at maybe a hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars almost a hundred and forty thousand dollars for a truck that a year later is going to be a hundred thousand dollars with tax and license maybe a hundred and ten thousand dollars you're throwing away let's just say thirty thousand dollars just <sighs> throwing it away burning it burning that cash for a car that's just a year before now if you start going back two years before let's go back to 2022s you'll see the high prices are what they are there's always going to be those there those are the cars let's assume that are not selling and then you've got the low prices that hopefully we see selling and if you look at the difference in prices there you start getting into the the mid 90s okay depending on how many miles are in the car that has a lot to do with it but if you're buying that truck to drive that truck just know you are going to experience massive depreciation it's easy to go and figure out what it costs to drive that car per mile based on the average depreciation and your gas mileage which is like 10 to 14 miles 12 miles on average you're going to get about for every eight, I think it's eight gallons of gas. So if you sat eight gallons of gas, you're gonna get about 8.3 gallons of gas. You're getting 
about, so I think eight tanks laid out there, eight gallon tanks, and then, I don't know, add a third of another one. You're looking at about 100 miles out of that truck. So that means that you're maybe getting 130 to 160 miles per tank. Add in the depreciation that you're gonna take just in the first year. How about this driving off the lot? And you're looking at anywhere between a 25 to 40% drop in price between one year old and like three years old. So if you go back to the 2021s, you can find them with high mileage in the 60s, with medium mileage in the 70s, and low mileage, lower mileage, let's say in the 15,000, 20,000 mile range, you might be in the, in the mid 80s. And those are soft now, meaning you can find one, go in there and negotiate the daylights out of a better price on those things. And one way to know is if you have a TRX right now, go into a dealership and ask them what they'll give you for one. Because right now there's 2,000, according to car gurus, 2,400 plus TRXs for sale. 2,400 plus. That's just on car gurus. We don't know what's not showing on there. Private party stuff that's not being filtered in. And that means, let's just say there's 2,500 out there. 2,500 of them and more coming. But then what's gonna happen when the 2025 comes with the six cylinder? I think it's gonna be a twin turbo. In a, they're gonna call it a TRX. Then the TRX is here. So wouldn't that cause the prices to go up? And I know someone's already typing, but Brad, the new TRX that's coming out is gonna be a six cylinder. Nobody's gonna want that. They're gonna want the Hemi car. So, so won't the Hemis go up in value? No, stop thinking that. 24, 2,500 of these things out there. From $60,000 to $125,000, that means that you decide what you wanna pay for it and how much you want to put into it to keep it running if it needs repairs. And even with an extended warranty on it, you're still gonna be forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 under what a brand new one costs. So I will tell you, there is no way, even because the six cylinder comes out and nobody is gonna want it, does not mean that your TRX is gonna to go to the moon in value. You need to get, we all need to get our heads out of that place. These are disposable vehicles. They're meant to drive until they can't drive anymore. Good news is, is they can last a very long time if you take care of them, meaning you could buy the one with 70, 80, 90,000 miles on it for $60,000, and if you're handy and you like to work on cars and you wanna keep it running and take good care of it and maybe rebuild it at some point, that car will still be here 20 or 30 years from now. But when it's got 100 and some thousand miles on, it's gonna be absolutely at the lowest end of whatever appreciation magically were to happen. So they are not investments. Go invest in something much more secure, much more likely to increase in value. Enjoy these cars, have fun, drive the wheels off of them. And just know the reason why there's so many of these things for sale is because the gas mileage is an average of 12. But that's assuming that you drive it in the most docile way you can. That's not you stomping on it, driving it hard, off-roading it, racing people from stoplight to stoplight. The gas mileage you're gonna get is likely not gonna be the gas mileage you see on there. Now, yes, somebody's gonna write. I'm, I'm, I hear you typing now. But Brad, I'm getting 20 miles the gallon on the highway in my TRX. Good for you, good for you. If you can spend all your time on the highway, all your time coasting and drafting behind semi-trucks, good for you but the vast majority of these things it's probably the worst gas mileage you're ever going to see well nobody should buy that with that in mind i'm just saying that's why so many get for sale because people will buy them think that it's going to be their daily driver and find out real quick that they just added a thousand dollar a month bill on top of their fifteen hundred dollar a month car payment and they realize that makes no sense almost every used trx that i've called on in the past when i've asked why it's there what happened why did somebody trade it in so fast because I was actually considering getting one until I realized it's just the stupidest thing in the world to own unless you, you want to go do four and a half seconds, zero to 60 in a, in a pickup truck. Every dealer would say to me, oh, they couldn't do the gas. They couldn't afford the, the upkeep. Tires cost a fortune. I mean, all these things that basically came down to the cost to drive it, the cost of ownership, it just made no sense. It was the most impractical thing you can ever buy. 
But if you buy it as a fun toy and you're filthy rich, because that that's what I think the TRX is. It's a rich person car. That's what it is. But I mean rich, rich person. Rich person that can just have it just to play with it. Or they don't care about gas. Sometimes I think I don't care about gas, but then I'm standing at the gas station and think this is the second time this week, but in a TRX, you probably added an extra stop every week. <laughs> probably five more stops a month. That's why they come back for sale. And that's why they're not holding their value. They're just a fun toy, but they're a $125,000 fun toy that depreciates 30, 40% very quickly I mean in just a couple of years and it's no surprise considering that the worst appreciating car in America from what I heard was a Maserati so if Maserati is is owned by the same company Stellantis then maybe there's a competition here to see if the TRX can beat the Maserati in depreciation as we see time go on and the in, insane amount of these things that we're seeing come back on the market for sale so with that, everybody, cool truck, I agree, the coolest truck ever, but it's a rich person car. And it's not worth $125,000. It's not worth $100,000. Go buy yourself one for 80 grand if you gotta have one. If it's listed for 85, offer them 80 and walk and get that car. And I still think that's a lot of money, but you'll get a hell of a lot of truck and save yourself $45,000 and pay for the repairs. So with that, please like, subscribe, comment, share this video, and I'll see you in the next one, everybody. Bye-bye.